Thank you, Imogen. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor, it's a pleasure to be here because I'm kind of a little bit doing something else, I believe, uh, what we're hearing about in the last 24 hours. I'm going to talk a little bit about technology, skin cancer apps, can they do something for us, and uh, how consumer tech is going to change anything in this space, uh, because we all run around with a device in our pocket. Um, I will introduce me shortly, but this is, I don't know if you've seen this type of messages around. Uh, media is hungering for disruption, especially disruption within the healthcare space. Woman diagnosed cancerous mold angle through smartphone app. Kind of seemed like a fantastic story, really, but it's, uh, I don't know how, how many, how many of you seen these types of stories in the media? How many of you do believe that this is reality? <laughs> Good. I asked the same question. I was doing a presentation for the Danish Foreign Ministry uh, about this, and they actually, they were, everyone believed this. They actually did. So you are much more educated. I have also expected you to be, so. <laughs> this is maybe the right kind of question we should ask. Do skin cancer screening apps really work? This is kind of what I'm going to deep dive into a little bit. And uh, you should not trust everything I say because I'm one of the persons doing one of those apps. So I'm very, <laughs> I'm, I'm not trustworthy in this case, but I'm trying to take it on a higher level. I'm an entrepreneur, and I've been doing all kind of IT entrepreneurship for the last 18 years of my life. I'm from Denmark, as you can probably hear, and I'm the founder of an app called MySkin. Uh, I don't know if it's an advantage to be from Denmark, but that at least is a fact. That is what you can believe. That's really a fact. Uh, I'm living with the concern. Uh, I have a partner, Ricky, and we have three shared kids. And I hold a degree in mathematics from the University of Copenhagen, a master's degree. So I'm not a clinician. So I'm, I'm observing observation in this space, which is not totally new to me, but I'm not on the clinical side. So I don't make software to be on the clinical side as well. But you all know this, that this is really important. This is the thing that's going to change things in the preventive space. I know that a lot of people here is, have been patients or are patients. I'm going to talk about prevention, and especially secondary prevention. And key here is if you catch melanoma early, you will most likely survive. Uh, and the other thing I was really when I was deep diving into this was that over 50% of melanoma is actually found by the users and the people, not by the doctors. More or less because you cannot be by the doctor all the time. So it is the people that kind of find them and go to see a doctor and they haven't noticed anything on their skin. So, and what I realized at the same time was that all the investments and all the money and all the things we hear about new immune therapies, better equipment for the doctors and all these, they're optimizing the clinical process of treatment assessment, which is really good. But there are really no investments in making the consumers better at this with technology. And since there is over 50% of melanoma is detected by a consumer. Why don't we invest a lot of money in these type of prevention? Because quality of life as well, it's about finding this thing as early as possible. And that's kind of kept on going in my head. And I kind of was annoyed about this on a personal level as well. And when you go into this again, it's, you find out that this is something that most likely happened on the outer side of your body, on your skin. It is something about a change on your skin. There's a lot of criteria, A, B, C, D, E, but to, to the point, it's about keeping an eye on your skin and watch out for changes. A change in an existing mole or a new spot on your skin. And that is kind of something you can do as a person. You can help yourself a lot in this space. And uh, the doctors, they're really good at looking at you now and here and say, is this dangerous? Do you have to go to the hospital? But most likely, most people that go down, I know from Australia, for example, they have one million people visiting GPs a year about skin cancer and melanoma. 
and approximately 10 to 15,000 of those go into a kind of clinical program. So we have approximately 990,000 that are in the high risk group, but will be sent home again. And they will probably be sent home with this. This is best practice. You've seen those, you know these. These are some guidelines, what you should do for yourself at home. And of course, you should check your, your skin for signs, and you should do primary prevention, avoid the sun, do, put on sunscreen and those kind of things. But what I kind of thought, why don't we help them with, with some extra information? Why don't we give them some data points? Not data points as you use in a clinical context, but why don't we use technology, photos, to kind of become more aware and more informed about this yourself. So now I'm just going to tell you a little bit briefly about my skin, because this is kind of baseline, and I'm going to talk about the complexity in this space around all these apps. But what I really created was a consumer tool out there, a tool for keeping an extra eye on your skin. It is fairly simple in the app term, it's about identify areas, it could be molds or areas on your body. You should document these with photos so you know how it looks and you should compare later on, you take photos over time and you can compare and you check your skin to see if anything is changing on your skin. And of course you should repeat this and the app will remind you to do this on a regular level and you can decide if it's, you want to do it a month level, or a three month level, or a half year level. It's up to you to decide this. But it doesn't give you any answers. It's your tool for your data points. And I don't know if you've been thinking, I know you have probably know a lot more about this than I do really, but it is kind of difficult to spot a change on your skin. This is very personal for me, but this, because this is my son, I caught this, kind of odd looking, and over a month, odd looking mold, and over a month you can see the satellite next to it was kind of moving into the other one. It has probably some of the asymmetrical kind of things, and me knowing a little bit about it, okay, should I go see a doctor about this? And of course this is my son, so I go see my doctor about this, because, uh, and also I know that youngsters, he's 15 years old, they, they, the, the skin develop, their moles develop as well, so, but then again, melanoma can be found in young people as well. So when I came down to the GP and showed him this, he said, that, that's pretty good. When you show me this kind of event, I had to send you to the hospital immediately because this is too aggressive and development for, for even for a young person. So we went to the hospital and luckily the, the doctors at the hospital examined it and said there was no cancer in this. This is really good. That's, so, it is a very personal story for me as well. And another feature we kind of have in the app is, because in adults, 70% of melanoma cases are not associated with existing mold, but form as new marks on your skin. So I've interviewed so many people, and a lot of people know that it should look up for change, but most people know, probably not you, because you're so much more educated in this space than, than, than most people. They're kind of saying, but if a mole is changing, I should go see a doctor. Yeah, but you should also look for new spots. And looking for new spots could even be even harder on a back like this. So one of the features we have is that we can, on our, you can push a button in the app, you can take these two photos and you get a web link on it, you can put it on a big screen and you can lock them and you can zoom into them and you can go over them, just kind of have a look all over your skin and see if there's new spots popping up. So it's about documenting. Still no clinical advice, and I would never do that. So what we do here more is strengthen the user skin checking process with education and personal engagement without taking the responsibility away from either the user or the doctor. We don't do any assessment or diagnosis from computer algorithm in the app whatsoever and always recommend to see a doctor if you notice anything changing. So the complexity is here that for many people it seems like a very reasonable uh, uh, statement that you can download an app, take a photo, and you can know if you have skin cancer. For many people, and especially for the media, they love to write those stories because it's very dramatic. But there is lack of evidence in this space. It is not a clinical process, it's not a clinical tool. 
we have all the false, posit uh, false positives and false negatives to take care of. This is, this is really dangerous information you took. So you should be very careful what you state when you have these kind of things. So then again, the media, there is no disruption in the space, but there is a behavioral thing you should take care of yourself, really. Invest a little bit of time in yourself. So what do I believe in the future? I believe on the clinical side, we will have a lot of technology supporting the dermatologist and the GPs with technology, imaging, recognition technology, deep learning technologies, and evidence is starting to show in this area. And they will always be a decision support tool for the doctors, I believe. Using data to assist dermatologists and maybe even the GP, but still a clinic decision made by a doctor. On the consumer side, there's still, I believe they still need to use photos in an intelligent way. You can use photos and to educate people, monitoring, collecting your data, access to people history and how their skin is developing. Having people to use data and photos to make more clever decisions. Inefficiency, healthcare is huge because there's a lot of people going to, to the doctor just because they, they, they maybe should go, because they, but they thought there's something developing on their skin. Now they can maybe take more informed decisions. So we're supporting users with the process, reminding them, keeping them on track. And this is much more a behavioral thing than it is a clini clinical thing. And that is kind of one of my key points. Will these two domains merge together? Maybe in the future, I don't know. But that will future, future will show. And of course, if they merge together, that will be based on evidence and statistics and all that kind of thing. So there is a challenge in healthcare. A huge challenge, which is also an opportunity. We need to do something. We need to change. We need better technologies. We need to reach out broader. Healthcare costs is an all-time high. Demand for doctors is exploding. I believe in 2025, there's 100,000 doctors missing lack of supply in the US alone. Skin cancer incidence is increasing all over the world, including melanoma. So there is an increasing problem. Maybe they have kind of stagnating a little bit in Australia, but it is it's a very big problem. Primary prevention is well known about avoiding the sun, avoiding UV. But secondary prevention is open for innovation and evolution, both on a clinical side and in a consumer context. So, and I actually believe that within my lifetime, I actually believe with the future, we can actually go to a, clo a close to a future where skin cancer mortality will become very close to zero. And I believe technology will kind of be part of that road. Maybe not in the 10 years, but in 30 years time. This is um, a personal story. This is my partner, Ricky. She has 12 moles removed. None of them has been melanoma. One of them has been precancerous. We are looking after her skin all the time. She is in the high risk group. I found out later I was also in the high risk group. So this is my meaningful mission to change how people help themselves in noting the changes on the body. And the change on a in a mold could be an early sign of skin cancer. And I'm always struggling and always communicating because I want to be the app that doctors are delighted to recommend for self-examinations. So therefore, I'm really proud that some of the strongest stakeholders in, the, in this world, we're working with, together with them, British Skin Foundation, we're working with Cancer in South Africa, we have a strong relation to Can Canadian Skin Cancer Foundation, we have a strong relation to some of the Can uh, Australian organizations as well. And now we see the clinical side as well, because we just made a deal with the largest Nordic private hospital chain, because they want to be pre use preventive services and clinical services side by side, because they ju just want to have a more holistic view on their patients or their people that are living with this concern for all their life. So prevention and clinical treatment service and assessment goes hand in hand by each other, support each other. And these are experts' opinions about using photos all over the world. I'm really proud. I didn't do anything about it. But suddenly we came out that the government in Australia is actually recommending on their public uh, skin checking guide, they actually recommend my app to be used in this context. And I, don't, I do believe it's because there's so much noise in this. And we have 
trying to communicate this for the long run. There is no quick wins, there is no quick solution. You have to accept this is ongoing, you have to live with it. But you can use technology to make your process maybe easier. Maybe this, our app and solution is not for everyone. Um, I'm using it, I know a lot of people using it. And there's a lot of recommendations from some of the largest organizations and Walter Kluivers also came out with, with recommending to everyone that they should start using photos to document how their skin is evolving. Because this is not a problem on a global scale that the doctors can solve by themselves all alone. We need to invest in all the users, all the consumers out there, all the people that need to use something for themselves mainly. A quarter of a million downloads at our current point. And of course, I'm, I'm proud to say it's the highest rate of skin cancer happen in the world. But the point is here that what, what is most important is that it shows that people know there is no quick win. Because the other apps, they have a lot lower rating because they promise you can download the app, take a photo, and get some kind of diagnosis assessment. These people, they know that this is not about a diagnosis. This is about taking care of yourself, helping yourself in this. And the real question we want to answer, does this work, really, on an evidence-based level? And I don't have the answers for that yet, because this would take a lot of time, many years. So I don't have the answers to this yet, but I know that all the dermatologists I've been speaking to, they are delighted to recommend this as the tool that users use when they're not seeing the doctor. And I have a lot of users writing to me as this is the most important tool they have on their phone. And I would say about, about 50,000 of the 250,000 users we have is using the app in an active way. I don't know, the future will probably show that there's some groups of people that use these kind of technologies more than others. So I would say on an evidence-based level, it's inclusive what we know about this yet. But I use it for myself. I had the support from one of the cancer organizations. I have a lot of support from the doctors. I've been working with some of the best professors in Denmark to develop this. And I always communicate very conservatively about it because it's not about making people afraid, having them download the app and think they can get a quick answer because there isn't any answers really on the short run to this. So there is a disclaimer here, because I cannot go out and say this is consumer technology, something you should do for yourself. This is not a clinical tool. So if you're using it for something else, you should use it for education, awareness, prevention, and monitoring your skin. But if you are in a patient kind of setting with your doctor, you should talk to your doctor about it, because it's not a clinical tool. As one of the user quote, and I really like that, it's an excellent tool for keeping an extra eye on your skin in between doctor visits. Because I don't know how many of you, how often you go to see a doctor. You probably do a lot more, of course, due to your history. But it's complex, especially since the anxiety level is pretty high for people that live in this and know that they're in the high-risk group. And the high-risk group is really huge on a global level. So not a clinical tool. It's a tool for you to monitor your skin on a more informed way using photos. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>